I'm about to walk out the door to Houston right now, but I wanted to quickly pop in and say hi. If you're new around here, my name is Paige. I consider myself everybody's best friend. Um, if you're not new around here, thank you so much. But anyway, I am on my way to Houston, Texas. I am so excited because I'm about to meet with Dr. Spiegel. She's a plastic surgeon, and we are going to have a consultation today for a potential revision surgery. I'm interviewing her today, having a consultation, and I'm bringing you along with me. So if you've never had a consultation before with a plastic surgeon, this is such a good video for you. And even if you have had one, I am giving you the full behind the scenes. So you're gonna actually sit down with me and I'm gonna record the whole thing, which is so cool of her to let me do. I'm really grateful that she's letting me do this, but you'll get to see all the questions that I ask, all the problems that I'm currently having, and we're gonna talk about implants. We're gonna actually feel the implants. I'm really grateful to Mentor. Mentor, thank you so much for partnering with me on this video, and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the whole thing, so let's go. Also, that was a little bit chaotic, but can you tell I'm excited? I am just so ready to meet this amazing plastic surgeon. I've just heard such good things about her, and I'm just so excited. Okay, let's go for real this time. <laughs> So I always wear this kind of thing to the evening because I'm like I don't want to be fully naked, but I have to be fully naked for this appointment except for these little pants. This is an experience. aesthetics um, you know things are looking very nice um, but even without knowing that they're submuscular I would know okay. and one of the kind of key reasons why is that there is widening <clears throat> between the implants which is sort of a function of the width of your sternum and then the muscle and you're probably you know athletic your muscles pretty thick and so it's sort of spreading the implants apart the beauty of going prepectoral <clears throat> is that we really are not confined by the muscle at all and we can set the footprint of the breast where we want it and so that's when we get to having a little bit more aesthetic control over you know the cleavage and, and, and all of that but otherwise you know they're they're just a little bit far apart um, and a little bit firm you know a yeah. little bit um, kind of obviously because they're <clears throat> different implants so they will feel a little bit firmer um, any other kind of it's complaints. Just, I, I'm sure you can even just see how I naturally just slump yeah. over. Like I'm just very uncomfortable. Um, I, because I think because of how they're placed. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, like when I'm doing certain workouts and movements, they're so far in my armpit. Yeah. Like literally, my arm fat will like hit my implant, and sometimes I'll even have like bruising right here from how really? often. Yeah. I'm like hitting it. Mm -hmm. um, the animation deformity, it doesn't bother me. I think it's just part of the process, but like it is pretty bad when I'm doing like kayaking. Yeah, like you can see, you can even see when you're moving. When I'm yeah, moving, I can like, see it. Absolutely. You know, things like that. Um, the, there's definitely like the mm -hmm. pockets here and things like that. Like they're just very clearly fake looking. Like mm -hmm. it looks like they're just kind of bolted yeah. on. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, it's uncomfortable, like how much they're spreading. I'm starting to get um, stretch marks right here mm -hmm. just from how much they're spreading. Yeah. And definitely, like, there's certain movements that, like, I'm more insecure about doing, like, definitely when I'm intimate with my partner. Mm -hmm. Like, there's certain yeah, actions you can, yeah, see. I can see. It. You yeah. can see. Yeah, I can see that. Um, so there's things like that, but it, it really is less. I can name a million aesthetic things that are wrong. <laughs> Um, well, name me your top three. But I'm not, I don't even care about the aesthetics at this point. It's really the discomfort of my back, my neck, mm -hmm. and my shoulders. And I'm like, I'm so uncomfortable. Got it. 
Um, so I'd really, like, that's my main concern yep. is my comfort. Yep. And then, of course, like, I would like them to be, sort of I think, closer, closer together. together. Yep. Um, Absolutely. And the animation deformity and things, but do you then have rippling, you know, yep. when you do go over and what's the... Yeah, so um, we have, so the function of the muscle, as you know, sort of contracts and then the implant is pushed down and out. So that's partly why they're sort of spread and also feeling like they're um, kind of to the side too much. So again, we do have all of that control. We can set a pocket for the implant where we put it, but obviously now that we don't have the muscle to camouflage any implant rippling, we will see it more, particularly because you're relatively thin up here, so you you know you've had a good mastectomy, meaning that it's pretty thorough. So it's it's thin. Um, so how do we uh, deal with that? Um, so with the mentor implants, they have the extra fill, and we can show them to you if you haven't seen them before. That basically have a slightly more fill, and therefore less rippling. So that's kind of the 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 way to camouflage it, and then also are these the memory gel? Or the uh, memory gel extra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, the other um, way that we would do that is kind of in stages, we probably would want to go back and fat graft. So there's kind of two ways of dealing with rippling. Um, the implant type, uh, the way that you control the pocket, the looser the pocket, the more rippling, the tighter the pocket, the less rippling. That's kind of why an overfilled implant is also um, uh, ripples less. And then the third thing is fat grafting. And that's uh, done at a second stage. So when we go to prepec, we sort of undo what was done, rebuild the breast. Uh, we put kind of an internal dermal collagen brassiere uh, to hold the implant and we kind of shape it where we want it to be. That's the matrix, right? Yes. And then we let it all heal. And then about three, four months later, we go back and do fat grafting. And that actually results in a very natural looking breast. Um, and then, you know, camouflages any rippling, which you really get with any implant. There is a little bit of rippling. So we do still rely on some cushioning from the tissue to kind of camouflage that. Okay, um, question for you. Are you able to use this same scar? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. So scars. you don't have to go. No. Uh, okay. No. Uh, amazing. No. Awesome. That would be that would be awful. You know, we want to keep all of the scar away from the visual part of the breast. You know, the kind of scar that's in the crease is very well tolerated. You know, it's not really seen. I mean, you can sort of see it if you're. Yeah. Oh, you do have a nice crease, so it should be. It's it, your your implant has become lower than the crease um, because again that function of the muscle it's pressing it down. So we would talk about maybe lifting that so the crease is actually at the crease and oh, not wow. on the breast. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the beauty of using the collagen is that we can set the perimeter of the breast and we can sort of set the bottom part of the collagen at the fold so that we're not having that kind of lowering effect. So there's a lot of control. That's the beautiful thing. It's sort of like we can design it the way we want it. We're not really limited by the muscle. That sounds awesome. Um, I'm trying to think about what other questions I have, but really, this is like the first appointment that I've had that I want to cry in a good way. <laughs> um, sorry, I wasn't expecting to like be emotional, but I really am. Um, I just have had really bad experiences coming in, so it feels nice to hear, like, good stuff, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the beauty, <laughs> and that's the exciting thing about what really we've evolved to be able to offer, yeah. you know? Because, um, <laughs> thanks. you know, when you, when you listen to patients, particularly women like you who are young, who are, you know, beautiful in the prime of their life, you know, you want to feel good about your breasts and the way you look. And I, and I really do think that we've, doing the pre-PEC approach has liberated us from being constrained by all of the muscle issues. And that's kind of what you're experiencing. You know, I mean, a lot of our patients, um, you know, their physicians sometimes, they don't even know they've had a mastectomy. Wow. They just look like they've had an augmentation, you know, a, a good yeah, one that yeah. doesn't have the rippling and all of that. No, a lot of my friends that have had, like a lot of my breasties that have had over the muscle, like you can't even tell. It's yeah. unbelievable. 
Um, I had a question and now I can't remember it, but, um, oh, something that you specialize in that I wonder if I'm too late for is the, the nerve. nerve preservation or nerve like regenerating. Yeah, so the beautiful thing about sensory nerves, unlike motor nerves, is that they can grow after a very long time. Can you explain the difference? If you so, don't mind. <laughs> so motor nerves are nerves that supply your muscles. And in order for them to work, they have to go to the muscle and they have to connect to what's called a motor end plate, which basically is what makes the muscle work. Um, there's a finite amount of time that the nerve has to reach the muscle before the muscle atrophies and especially it's just gone. And that's about 16 to 18 months. With sensory nerves, however, the sensory sort of receptors don't really go away the same way that muscle does. And so you can re-innervate things that have been denervated years later. In fact, the, the oldest patient I had uh, that I did that for um, had her mastectomy, I think 35 years prior to me doing the reconstruction. This was using her own tissue and I connected the nerve and that worked. Um, Implant-based reconstruction that's neurotized or resensitized is new, so we're still figuring it out. Um, and the uh, so it's not about the nerve that is left after the mastectomy because we know that we can use that because we've proven that with using your own tissue. The question is, what happens to the nerve that's supposed to reach the um, the nipple areola complex? Are there still you know kind of um, little fragments of tissue that can be connected and attached to the nerve as the nerve grows to restore sensation? That's still a little bit unknown um, as far as a delayed. You know, we do it now immediately. But the downside is really no downside. You know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's not, um, it's not, yeah. you know, there's like we're trying. Really, yeah, so it, there isn't really a downside. So I think it's definitely possible. I would just have kind of low expectations yeah. because we don't know. I mean, it's you have nothing to lose. Right, <laughs> exactly. Is there a way to test beforehand? Um, like where I'm at now versus after? Yes, so we have a way, um, we have a, a device called PSSD, or now it's rebranded to Acroval, but it's essentially a breast sens sensory device where you're touched with kind of a little pin which um, you press a button, and that essentially tells us how much pressure was required for you to be able to feel it. Obviously, the more pressure, the less sensitivities, and, and so, you know, if you need a lot of pressure, that means there's almost no sensation. Very little pressure means, you know, you have sensation. So we can do that before and after to look and see how the nerve is growing. Um, the nerve growth is about a millimeter a day, so it takes time. And if you look at the distance between the nerve and the kind of where it's supposed to innervate, that's probably about like a six to eight month distance. Of, of that the nerve has to grow. And so as the nerve is growing, what you will feel is slight kind of maybe sometimes electric shocks or pins and needles as the nerve is growing along the nerve graft. And the nerve graft sort of serves as a road for the nerve to go on as it's growing. Um, and uh, it's got some kind of uh, nerve growth factors that stimulate it to grow. Um, and so sometimes our patients feel that kind of electric shock, so it's a good thing. Sometimes it could be a little bit uh, surprising, mm -hmm. but when it is happening, it's actually a good thing, and you can follow it as it grows. So that's kind of the, the hope when, when nerves are restored. Of course, what I don't know is the kind of what the nerve looks like, um, the one that was cut with the mastectomy. Traditionally, I can find it but it is usually scarred, it's sometimes hard to find, and the length of it sometimes can be limiting. So there are additional kind of things that predicate the success of resensation in this type of situation. But still so cool that you can even try. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me it's very exciting because I've done nerve, uh, sort of sensory nerve uh, with flaps since 2004. <clears throat> routinely, you know, I really try to do that for all of my autologous reconstruction patients. But of course, as our implant uh, patients grew, I really was frustrated at the fact that I couldn't offer it to my implant-based patients until recently. 
because we sort of really didn't know what would happen to the nerve. And um, there's been work done to show that it does work with that kind of those little sensory um, little pro, um, kind of remnant structures in the nipple areola. They've been kind of looked at histologically to say, yes, there are potential little ways for the nerve to grow into. And that's actually the revolutionary thing. So the body's amazing. I mean, we really don't give it enough credit yeah. for what it can do. It's just kind of take adva taking advantage of all of that and trying to see if we can restore. Because if we can restore sensation, a beautiful soft breast that you know looks the way you want it to, you know, we can design it to what you want as far as fullness, size, shape, all of that. It's pretty powerful. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Like, oh, I'm, I'm really excited. Even just to know that you do all of that is pretty unbelievable that you do flap surgeries and implant surgeries. Like, I don't think I know another surgeon that does both. You know, my, my passion's always been uh, breast reconstruction ever since I started. When I first started, it was in 2001, where implant-based reconstruction really was very not in a great state. And I really wanted to deliver the best options to my patients, so that's why using your own tissue. I was the first one to do a deep flap in Houston, which wow. had, hadn't been done before. I actually traveled to uh, Europe, to Ghent, uh, and uh, Dr. Allen, both those people were, uh, Blondie and Allen were sort of the ones I learned it from and then brought it here. And then when I did my microsurgery fellowship, I did a lot of nerve work with, uh, you know, uh, brachial plexus kids. And when I was doing my uh, autologous reconstruction, I've been doing it for two, three years, I had a patient that came in that had a really beautiful reconstructed breast, uh, but ended up getting burned because she was cooking and the pasta right. water hit her breast. And I thought, this is really nonsensical. You know, you can't just reconstruct kind of the look of the breast. It has to feel right for the patient. And so that's when I started doing the resensation back then, uh, since 2004. So it's been amazing. And then again, uh, during that time, implant-based reconstruction, I started really working a lot in because not everybody's a candidate for your own tissue, particularly younger women who don't have a lot of excess tissue, who don't really want a big surgery and are considering preventative mastectomy, like all of your kind of followers. The, those, that really was a frustrating part of my practice back then. We didn't do nipple sparing mastectomies. We really didn't have great implant choices because collagen or ADMs weren't really even available back then. And so we were covering things with muscle. We really weren't sparing the nipple. So I would say in my 20 years of in practice, the um, implant-based reconstruction has absolutely changed to the point where now when I see patients like we're talking today, it feels more like an aesthetic consultation, you know? Which, you know, it's always funny because the better you are, you know, patients come back and I'm like, oh, I have this little area right here. And it's amazing that's like, that's what we talk about nowadays instead of, you know, like, I just don't like the way I look. And that is awesome. That's why I love being a plastic surgeon. Yeah. Oh, I'm really excited. Wow. So this is uh, what it looks like now. And let me go back to show you so this is the traditional subpec reconstruction with the tissue expander under the muscle, and this is the collagen. Some surgeons use collagen that needs to be expanded, so that's why they use a tissue expander. Um, so what, what then they do is switch it over to an implant and sometimes do fat grafting. This is the implant I currently have in my body. And this is what I'm going to get. And when you feel, first of all, you can see the difference, but feeling them, this is so much harder. Like, what would you say this feels like? Um, it's like. That's a good question. Oh my God, it's so hard. It's like, you can feel the thickness of the shell of the implant actually, versus this is very soft and squishy. Like this feels like an actual boob, like very soft like feels like actual breast tissue. And this is very hard. Like this doesn't feel natural at all. Wow. I'm so glad you gave me this to feel the difference because it, you can't even compare them. I am so grateful and overwhelmed.
overwhelmed. I feel so seen and heard. This is the first time that I've cried in an appointment that like in a good way. Like she made me feel so good. I think I found my surgeon. Y'all, she is amazing. She knows so much. She is such an expert and she like cares so much. She spent two hours with me, two hours. I really feel like everything that I have been so worried about, all of my discomfort is finally going to be taken care of. I have no words, I am just so grateful. I am so, so, so grateful. I'm so grateful. <laughs>